2020. Tonight. Moving in and out of Luke Spencer's life until, well, I, I was spending more time as him than I was as me. Their fans know them as Doug and Julie, Raven Swift, Luke, and Laura. They are the soap superstars, but in real life, who are they? And now other stars are getting into the act. Next week, Elizabeth Taylor makes her appearance. Tom Hoving reports on the conflicting worlds of the soap stars. Next week, Elizabeth Taylor will do a kind of acting that she's never done before. She'll appear on General Hospital, a soap opera, television's top-rated daytime program. As a movie star, Elizabeth Taylor has played many different roles. But on General Hospital, she'll join actors who are known to their fans only by the one role they play, and that can lead to complications. From the darkened set of General Hospital in Los Angeles, Tom Hoving. Hugh Soap Opera has given rise to a brand new phenomenon, the soap super character. Not just superstar, super character. And being one can lead to a special occupational hazard, a kind of split personality. Am I me or my character? I call it schizosopia nervosa. Right now, Luke Spencer of General Hospital is the hottest super character in daytime, and his actor Tony Geary has a real case. <laughs> was just moving in and out of Luke Spencer's life until, well, I, I was spending more time as him than I was as me. I just can't cope without my soap. One in 15 Americans watches General Hospital every day. It's the highest rated soap in the history of television. They tune in to see soap's hottest super characters, the passionate duo Luke and Laura, played by Tony Geary and Jeannie Francis. General Hospital generally takes place in a hospital, but today's action isn't always covered by Blue Cross. General Hospital, show number 165. Take one. Tony Geary and Jeannie Francis spend more waking hours in their soap lives than their real ones. 12 hours a day, five days a week, 52 weeks a year. An actor's soap life can easily eclipse his own. I was relating to people, uh, people that I have known for, for years. Uh, suddenly, I couldn't talk to them because they were, I don't know, they just weren't as exciting as uh, Bobby and Ruby and Laura. I was a murderess, and then I had a mental block, and I was Looney Tunes, and then I was happily married, and then I was raped, you know. There was a year there, I swear, a year and a half, where I came to work, and every day I cried. That's the danger in soap operas, is actors who really uh, get so involved with the role, if they can't let it go, it becomes, uh, it dictates their lives almost. And I learned that. I learned that quite young. You know, I've been here since I was 14. While her character suffered a traumatized adolescence, Jeannie, a tutored child star, never even had to cope with high school. Luke is also a contrast to Tony Geary. Luke's a street smart disco king, outwardly tough but tender inside, a classic anti-hero. Oh, good evening, ladies. Do you know I love this woman? I bring to Luke Spencer his sensitivity, his romance, his humor, and his vulnerability. And he brings to my life aggression, ambition, ruthlessness, and uh, my personality and his have kind of molded together. And there are times when uh, I have to step way back and say, wait a minute, that's, that isn't me. Tony Geary is used to playing second fiddle to Luke. When he meets his public, he goes as Luke. It's Luke the fans know, Luke they come to see. First of all, I get real crazy. I do my impression of Luke Spencer doing Mick Jagger. I get real nuts, and then I'm invariably afterwards, I'm depressed. I think, what have I done? But that's the only way that I know how to handle that stuff, because I think those people deserve a show. It's not just a matter of what the fans deserve, it's what they demand. At this New Jersey soap star gathering, one of 300 last year, fans come to meet characters, not actors, characters they feel they know as friends. Chris Burnow of Guiding Light, Victoria Wyndham of Another World, Kim Schreiner of Texas, and Sharon Gabbett of Edge of Night all have to deal with double identity. I would like to, to meet Raven Swift. 
Oh, I bet you would. <laughs> Raven, the money-loving, manipulative sex bomb of Edge of Night, is played by Sharon Gabbett, who in real life is a hard-working actress in New York. People don't want to see Sharon because Sharon's probably quiet and boring compared to Raven. It's a wonderful group, yeah? Yes. All except for two. Uh, do I detect someone becoming Raven again? Okay. Raven is this, you know, this fantasy creature that everyone wants to see and meet. So Sharon! I put on a racy outfit and, uh, you know, I, I talk about wanting money and, and all the men in my life. And people see Raven and that's what they want. They become involved with the characters and they're just an extension of their own families. Go get I mean, If you saw a long lost relative, what would your first reaction be? Rush over and grab and hug them. It's so day to day, and they feel as though it's real life. We're so overwhelmingly identified with our material and our characters. The people say they, they feel they've known me. They do. I mean, that's who I am. Mary Stewart has been Joanne on Search for Tomorrow for an incredible 30 years, the longest running role in television. One song, young lady. If you promise not to give me any more arguments. I promise. Hush, little baby, don't say a word. Papa's gonna buy you a mocking. Four times married, three times widowed, temporarily blinded, falsely accused of murder, mother of two children, one killed in infancy, Joanne's life hasn't exactly paralleled Mary, who's a divorced but happy mother of two. But when Mary got a modern haircut, so did Joanne, and the fans took note. I had 5,000 letters from ladies who had also cut theirs. Does Mary Stewart and Joe ever become confused, mix into one? I hope we're not separated. Uh, it's hard to tell. You know, the, the joke is we look a lot alike. According to soap writer Harding LeMay, sometimes soap actors are better off leaving their characters at the studio. Uh, there's a lady who plays a woman who's a great cook on, on one of the soaps, and she invites you to dinner and serves you these meals, and she's a dreadful cook. But she thinks that she is that lady, and she really is an embarrassing cook. She's an actress, she's not a cook. Sometimes soap becomes real life, life turns into soap, and actors' lives are actually changed by the characters they portray. Bill Hayes and Susan Seaforth were cast as star-crossed lovers like Tony Geary. Trust me. Love me. So it doesn't affect your off-stage Tony Geary. You're not tired. No, I'm after just all of as that. horny off-stage as I ever was. It doesn't. I don't get off. You know, just popping into bed every day with uh, a lot of cameramen out there. Is that what you meant, or was I just being terribly glib? No, I think you got it right. I think I got there. it? Yeah, Good. Yeah. yeah, that'll work. More styrofoam cops. Tony Geary sees life beyond soaps. Off the set, his first love is music. Here, with his friends record producer Michael Lloyd and composer Michael White, Tony works on one of his own songs. He'll rob and cheat and steal you, try to kite but feel you. Better watch out for his evil senile grin. Tony is also writing a screenplay and working on a stand-up comedy act, all to build immunity against a serious complication of schizosopia nervosa, typecasting. It's going to be very difficult to break the mold of uh, Spencer. Especially since I, after this amount of time, so much of myself is in him. I don't think it's healthy for me as a person or as an actor. I would much rather, you know, wash the makeup off, hang up the costume, and leave him there. For now, and probably as long as Tony Geary is Luke Spencer, that won't be possible. But in soap opera, there's always a tomorrow. Can Tony beat Schizo Sophia Nervosa? Stay tuned. Within two weeks, the fans will see the long-awaited wedding of Luke and Laura. But since Jeannie Francis still hasn't signed her new contract, it could be a short honeymoon. You? Mm, it could. Thank you, Tom.